Now, automobile manufacturers do not, do not want you to work on your own vehicle. And to prove this point, I'll be showing some very good examples on this 12-year-old Audi S4. Now, you may be thinking it's an Audi. It's overly complex, and there is some truth to that, without a doubt. But if you watch other YouTube channels as I do, these vehicles, modern vehicles within the last decade or so, they are really not built for you to work on. And I'll tell you precisely why toward the end. Now to start off, just listen very, very carefully. Now that's the fuel pump being primed every time you open the door. Front doors, rear doors, doesn't matter. So if you're doing any fuel work on your vehicle, you have to keep these things in mind. If you open the door, you're going to have fuel all over the place. So you're dealing with more electronics than mechanical means. So let's start with just basic maintenance. And then for those of you more mechanically inclined, I think you will really get a kick out of what you see. Now for those of you that replace your own engine oil, chances are you can wrap up the job within 10 minutes. Not so fast on a modern vehicle. The biggest drawback is simply jacking up the vehicle. At the front of the vehicle, there's nowhere to jack up the vehicle from. And we have the same issue at the rear. There are no jacking points. Your only luck are the pinch welds right next to the tires. Now you may be thinking, ah, so what? I can simply use my floor jack. But you may see an immediate problem here. And the problem is there's not enough surface area for you to now drop that floor jack on your jack stand. These welds are just not large enough. So what in the world do you do? You simply use the floor jack that comes with the vehicle. Now even at this point, you're not ready to drain the oil. You still have to remove the plastic noise cancellation under tray. Then you're able to drain the fluid but you're still not done yet. Now, many of us are accustomed to the traditional dipstick, not so much on a modern vehicle. This is what you get. That's it. The only way to check the oil level is by starting the vehicle, letting it warm up, and checking the level from inside the cabin. Now, you may be thinking, that's not so bad. I only have to do that maybe every 7,500 miles, 10,000 miles. I can deal with that. But what if you have an engine issue? Let's say, for example, you need to replace a map sensor. Here's the location on a Honda S2000. You can simply see it's essentially at the throttle body. Here's one on a 2006 Acura TL, a 2010 Subaru Impreza, even an older Nissan Maxima. Not so easy on a modern vehicle. In fact, this has three map sensors. In fact, we have a boost slash map sensor here on the right hand bank, another one here on the left hand bank. But if you have another separate trouble code, you have to locate the other, the third map sensor. And you can think, okay, well, we know it's near the throttle body. So let's follow the air intake. We can remove this plastic tab and then you start looking around. And you're saying to yourself, holy cow, what in the world am I looking at? Is it this harness connector, this harness connector, this one over here? Where in the world does this map sensor live? Now the map sensor, the third map sensor, is not this, this, or this guy. It lives directly below right here. This is the third map sensor. It's another example. They do not want you working on your vehicle. Let's jump inside the cabin. Now looking at the right hand side of the gauge cluster, we see the fuel level. And a few months ago, I had a problem. The fuel level was no longer working and the miles left to an empty tank was reading zero. This vehicle has two fuel sensors. There's one that lives with the fuel pump underneath the rear seats, and then a second fuel level sensor that lives underneath the trunk pan. Which comes to mind another problem. Many code readers do not work on modern vehicles. You can get basic information, 
But when it comes to something really specific, I needed a code reader that was really programmed for this vehicle. And I did a separate video if you want to check that out. It's a really nice handy code reader that's uh, mobile based. But with that code reader, I was able to locate the correct fuel level sensor and then tackle the problem. And then I'll give you one more example and we'll wrap it up. But take a look at this engine bay. This was sort of shocking when I first got this vehicle and started doing some work on it. Look at the valve covers. At first I thought they are certainly metal valve covers, but they're not. They're plastic. And you will find this over and over again on many moderns. Essentially every make and model. Everything is just plastic. They have just discarded using metal. Everything is plastic. Even, for example, on BMWs regarding the hose clamps, they don't use metal hose clamps. They use plastic hose clamps. And they, uh, they are well known to have a very high failure rate. So you have to keep this in mind regarding modern vehicles. It's a different animal compared to what maybe you grew up with. Now most of you know what's happening here. Once the warranty period is up and you're paying 150 to 175 per hour, think about that, per hour, plus parts, plus the inconvenience to drop off and pick up your vehicle, and then you receive a massive repair bill, you say to yourself, I'm, I'm done. I'll sell this vehicle and lease or finance a brand new car. So it just keep, you just keep rotating to the dealership. I'm not knocking it, I'm just stating this is the way it is. Modern vehicles are just not as easy as it once was to maintain and repair. Now you can find certain vehicles to get around this. For example, Subarus, they still have that basic architecture of their four-cylinder boxer engines. Uh, inline four-cylinder Hondas, Toyotas. So there are certain vehicles you can certainly, um, that won't cost you a lot to maintain and are incredibly reliable. But there are many, many cars that will drain your bank account if you're not careful. That's the whole point here. So I hope you guys thoroughly enjoy this. And uh, as always, thank you for watching.